get started now. Thanks again for, for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to talk about Greece with you tonight. Um, and uh, we've got some great uh, co-hosts to, to help round out the event with all kinds of helpful information. Um, so yeah, just a couple of quick Zoom controls. Like I said, um, your, your video will be uh, off and you'll be muted, but you can chat, uh, type into the chat box anytime you like. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, with some introductions of your hosts for the evening. Um, so uh, Lena, would you like to start us off? <clears throat> um, sure. Hi, I'm Lena and I was born and grew up in the state of South Carolina in the United States. Um, but both of my parents are from the same small little village in Greece, and that is where all of my extended family still lives, and go there once a year to visit, at least. I grew up going to school there a little bit when I was younger, um, and I'm an intercultural educator, so I've lived and worked around the world, I guess, teaching people about cultural difference and how to understand and navigate it, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're lucky to have you. Thanks for joining us, Lena. Uh, and Joy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Joy Sherman. I'm a yacht captain in Connecticut, and I travel the world uh, on boats all over, taking people to different parts of the world by uh, boat. And I've done many trips uh, all over Greece uh, about four times, and uh, Athens, this trip that we're we're going to embark on is uh, my, this will be my third time. Um, so uh, I really enjoy meeting people and taking people sailing and teaching them about <laughs> sailing. It's a whole different way to, uh, to experience the world and it's, uh, it's, it's very, very special. So I look forward to sharing it with, with some of you. Awesome, yeah, thank you, Joy. Um, and uh, my name is uh, Laura Ham. I am the co-owner of Traverse Journeys, uh, which is a, a small group impact focused travel company that uh, has sort of set up this event for everyone tonight. Um, and we've been doing lots of events throughout this time that we're all uh, stuck at home so that we can, oops, uh, you know, join together and, and travel virtually. Um, so a little bit about uh, Traverse Journeys. Um, it's, as I said, an impact focused small group travel company. We create uh, itineraries for small groups and also custom trips and self-guided itineraries um, to over 20 countries across the world. And uh, in each itinerary, we infuse our, our motto of people, planet, and purpose. Uh, so what that means to us um, in, the, in the realm of people is that we focus on people-to-people -people experiences between the, the, the guests that are, are traveling with us in the local communities. Um, you know, we engage with local guides. Um, we, we seek destinations where uh, tourism income opportunities are, are needed and desired and where we can find impactful ways to, to engage with the local population. Um, and for the planet portion, um, obviously we, we select incredibly beautiful places on earth like Greece to, to visit um, and we always have environmentally conscious practices at the forefront. Um, we, we look for vendors and partners that have eco-friendly practices and support you know, conservation, sustainable agriculture, all these um, environmentally friendly ways to travel. Um, and purpose, uh, we, you know, try to create and infuse uh, the itineraries and experience with a, you know, trans transformative um, experience. And we also donate, uh, well, we partner with a local NGO in each country that we visit, and we donate a portion of the trip sales to that um, NGO. And at some point, the guests during the trip will uh, meet the members of the, you know, the NGO and engage and learn about um, what they do. Um, and that can look like anything from you know, marine conservation to youth education centers. There's a you know, women's co-op in Morocco, a sustainable agriculture um, you know, organization in Ireland. Uh, so I'll, we'll talk a little bit about our Greece partner later on. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, it's a little bit about Traverse Journeys. 
And so without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over uh, to Lana to start giving us a little snapshot of Greece. <laughs> Um, okay, yes, so we have Greece is uh, in Western Europe, but not really <laughs> geographically. Um, if you see the first little picture there on the top left, that is where Greece is in the you know span of Europe. And then on the right is the current uh, countries that are members of the EU. And but then on the top, the bottom left, that's those were the countries of the EU when the EU was first established. And so um, if you have been to much of Europe and Greece, you probably realize Greece isn't really very much like the rest of Europe. Um, and it was very much sort of brought into the fold of let's have Greece be part of Europe so that Europe could claim Greek history as European history. Um, so that's really kind of how Greece was brought into the EU. Um, Laura, you can go to the next slide. <laughs> um, and the capital, as a lot of you may know, is Athens. We have about 10 million people. Greek is the national language. And then um, Greek Orthodoxy is the official religion. Um, and that's also interesting because uh, religion is very much a part of national identity and not necessarily always about like a belief system um, or right a belief even in God. So even just a few years ago, I think 98% of Greeks identified as Greek Orthodox with less than half saying that they were actually religious. Um, and so that number has dropped a bit in the years since I studied this in grad school. Um, and then we have a parliamentary republic. So there's a president who is head of uh, state and there's a prime minister who's head of government and the government is made up primarily of the parliament, which the parliament is elected by the people and then the parliament appoints the leaders. Um, and then, the currency is the euro, and before it was um, drachmes. And um, there's also interesting history with that because once Greece was kind of brought into the EU and adopted the euro, that actually really hurt the Greek economy, um, similar to what happened with the other pigs countries, Portugal, Italy, uh, and Spain, because we had sort of weaker economies compared to the rest of Europe to begin with. So when we were kind of put into this uniform system of currency, it actually really hurt uh, the Greek economy. So it's important to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Lena. Um, I just want to backtrack a little too, because I forgot to give a little overview. So just to let people know, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Greece in general. We'll go into a lot of COVID uh, information. Um, we'll talk about Greek culture, Greek food. We go through like a little sample, our, our itinerary that we offer in Greece. Um, and throughout the event, if you have questions, feel free to pop them into the chat. Um, we can answer them as we go. If, uh, if it's something that we you know we're not gonna get to, or we also can, we'll have like a dedicated Q and A at the end. Um, and we're aiming for around an hour, but we might go a little over cause there's lots to talk about. Okay, sorry, just wanted to get all that in. Um, <clears throat> so moving on to talk about uh, COVID in Greece. Um, obviously top of mind for everybody. Um, so thankfully, uh, Greece did have a very um, proactive and um, quick, quicker at least, uh, response to COVID than many other places. Um, so they are actually um, they have one of the lowest infection rates and, and active cases per capita um, in all of Europe, even though they have the second oldest population um, in all of Europe. So they, they currently have around 4,000 cases in total, um, obviously less of those that are active. Um, and, uh, you know, they did that by closing everything down uh, very early on when their numbers were, were still quite low. Um, and culturally, there was, um, or there is a lot of prioritization on health um, in Greece. And so it was um, 
kind of people took on the the measures um, quite well. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, at the moment, uh, the the people that are allowed into Greece um, to travel are EU passport holders, um, including permanent residents of Schengen countries as well, um, as well as Bulgaria, Croatia, Cyprus, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Romania, Switzerland, Ireland, and the UK. Um, however, um, from Bulgaria and Romania, you have to have a, a test, a COVID test uh, upon entry that is obviously negative. Um, and then non-EU passport holders with EU permanent residence uh, permits may enter Greece. And um, in terms of the non-EU or Schengen countries that are currently allowed as of today, um, that would be Algeria, um, Australia, Canada, Georgia, Japan, Morocco, New Zealand, Rwanda, South Korea, Thailand, Tunisia, and Uruguay. Um, so that's the current list as of July 28th, um, and it's based on the criteria that the EU set forward that the COVID cases have to be um, like over the last 14 days that they have to be close to or below the EU average and that it has to have been sort of uh, consistently maintained or decreasing over the last two weeks. So um, Greece is currently uh, choosing to to adopt and follow those those EU um, guidelines or recommendations. Um, an interesting note is that, um, that, you know, countries do not necessarily have to adopt the EU suggestions. And there are a couple countries um, in the EU that have kind of their own rules um, that they're following, like, you know, Ireland and, and Croatia. Um, so there is, you know, the possibility that, uh, you know, anything can shift at any time. There's been some media reports that potentially sometime in August or maybe even July 31st that, you know, they, they might, um, you know, try to come up with a way to, to safely allow um, American travelers in. This is all very like rumor based and tentative, but, um, you know, it's worth definitely keeping an eye out and, you know, staying informed on the regular because, yeah, um, I know there's a lot of motivation to open the borders um, in a safe way because uh, tourism does make up such a huge part of the GDP in Greece. Um, <clears throat> so when you come into Greece, uh, before you leave, you fill out, before you leave your home country, you fill out a passenger locator form. Um, based on the information you provide in that form, you may or may not be tested on arrival. Um, if you're tested, you go to your hotel, onward to your hotel, um, and you wait for your test results. Um, and yeah, as long as you're negative, then you're free to, to move around. Um, and then in the country right now, you know, masks are generally required. Um, schools are open. Archaeological sites have extended hours to, to try and, you know, manage more people um, visiting, but with, you know, distance and safety. Beaches are maxed out at uh, 40 people per thousand square meters. Um, and, you know, most, um, you know, museums, shops, bars and restaurants and all that are open at limited capacity. Um, does anybody have any questions about COVID or anything to add to that, Lena? Or <clears throat> Anything else? All right, excellent. Um, so just a quick question. So right now sure. they're they're not allowing U.S. citizens, or is it by states, or do you know? Yes, that's correct. I mean, I know the uh, I know the European <laughs> Union is not, but I assume that that's all European Union countries. Right. So most European countries are adopting the the suggested guidelines um, but again it's it is a choice like each country has its own autonomy to decide whether or not they they will oh, um, they do. Okay. Greece, Greece is currently following those um, guidelines so yes today you as an American could not fly to Greece um, but you know there have been rumors or reports um, and there's certainly motivation to to try and um, you know update that so that Americans can travel in Greece. You, yeah, um, yeah, I think I heard you mention there was a criteria that they were looking at as far as case volumes going down for a certain period of time, or is that it that's based the on EU? That? Yeah, so the that's EU the will adjust its list of you know guidelines and recommendations and all that um, every two weeks based on the current infection rates and you know essentially like allowing in countries that are at or below the EU average. 
So the U.S. is, you know, not going to be on that list anytime <laughs> soon, probably. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and you know, our our chances at this point are are you know with that that hopefully given a couple of months, you know, maybe things will have gotten better, or that you know over the next month that there will be other ways, you know, whether it's testing or, you know, other measures that, that can safely allow uh, American kids. Question, if you <clears throat> reside in the United States as a, res as a resident, but you have a European passport, what's then? That's uh, a case of contact the embassy because um, <laughs> nobody wants to get out of plane and be refused uh, at the at the border. And that's kind of one of those gray areas. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, there's definitely more options to anyone who has a, a European um, passport. So, um, you know, maybe even it's, it's a matter of quarantining when you arrive in Greece. Um, but it is kind of not explicitly laid out as well for that kind of a case. <clears throat> All right, uh, well, we'll keep on moving on um, and talk about uh, the wonders of Greece uh, before and after COVID uh, that, that we'll all hopefully enjoy as soon as possible. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Lena to give us a little overview of the geography and climate. <clears throat> um, yes, so Greece, of course, I feel like everybody just thinks islands, islands, islands when they think of Greece. And there are a lot of islands, over 6,000, um, only about 227, which are actually inhabited. Um, but a lot of Greece is is the mainland. You can see in that picture there. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I was going to go. Okay. There's the mainland. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's mostly mountainous, Greece. Even on the islands, there are mountains, um, but we have 80% of the land is mountainous. And so there are rivers and gorges and waterfalls. And it's actually really great for hiking. I just think a lot of people don't think of Greece this way, but um, yeah. And it's also uh, weather-wise, we have mild wet winters and hot dry summers. And it's almost always sunny, especially in the summer, but it does get cold. It does snow in Greece. Um, <laughs> it's, it's more rare for it to snow on the islands like these pictures, but it does happen. It mostly snows like in the mainland on the, in the north, um, but it definitely, definitely snows in Greece. <laughs> Excellent, okay. <clears throat> and moving on. Um, yeah, and of course, Greece is kind of known as the birthplace of Western civilization. Um, as I said before, right, that's, this is kind of why it was brought into the fold of the EU, um, because of its history and, I guess, all the accomplishments of the ancient Greeks um, with the Olympics and democracy and theater, philosophy, math, science. Um, but a very significant part of Greek history and also plays a large part in Greek identity is um, being part of the Ottoman Empire for 400 years. And there's really this sort of collective memory and narrative around the 400 years of enslavement under the Ottoman Empire. And so Greece um, is very fervent about its independence and celebrating independence, which we do on March 25th. Um, and yeah, there are always big parades and parties and festivals. And going into, yes, yeah, some of the cultural values, one for sure is community and spending time with people, um, big meals where we eat very much family style, similar to how they eat in China. I don't know if you're familiar, but we just order lots of different plates and they're in the middle and everybody takes from the plates in the middle. It's really weird if you order your own dish in Greece. <laughs> I mean, people do it obviously, especially uh, travelers, but like it's it's weird to do it. <laughs> um, and yeah, we have like coffee shops and coffee houses and you will always see them full of people because relationship is really important to Greek people. And there's this perception of Greeks as lazy, but really I think it's just a misunderstanding of this value of community and spending time together um, in fellowship and talking and um, 
You'll also notice probably a lot within Greece, if you go back just for a second. Oh yeah, sorry, or, sorry. Sorry. Um, but there are lots of places where you'll see big groups of men outside of coffee shops. Um, these are Kafinia, and really it's kind of weird for women to go there. So I would say like, if you see one of these places, and maybe don't go inside, go to the one where you see like a mix of people. Um, but yeah, this is very normal and common in Greece and you can move okay. on. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and another big part of culture and values is, is hospitality. So we, we have this word philoxenia, which is kind of like um, love of the foreigner translated. Um, but hospitality is such an integral part of culture and we have basically a whole culture <laughs> around hospitality. And so people will visit each other's houses um, sort of in the mid-morning or the evening after the afternoon nap. And we have coffee and cake and just gossip and talk. <laughs> um, and everybody in their house has their house stacked with something called kerasmata, which is literally just these like goodies and treats that you have for this occasion because you always have to be prepared for visitors and it's so shameful if you're not, right? So you have a whole stock of supplies. Um, <laughs> Okay, you can. Yeah. And then we also, I think Greeks just have this really intense passion for life. And you can even see that in some of our concepts we have that can't necessarily be translated. Um, but things like meraki, which is to just to put your soul into something, you can make coffee with meraki, you can clean your house with meraki. It's just like to, um, yeah, to infuse what you're doing, I guess, with yourself and with love um and then we have this idea of kefi which is you know when you see people like breaking plates or having this big sort of greek party this is like an expression of kefi it's just like you, there's just so much um excitement and passion that it kind of explodes out of you um so this is pretty integral to I think to Greek life and Greek culture as well. I love how George is like dropping all these these links. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've noticed that too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, George. <laughs> um, and like I said, again, religion is very important in Greece, even if somebody doesn't identify as religious. Religion and all the things around religion will play a central role in people's daily life. Um, so going to church for different festivals and holidays and right having these big baptisms and weddings and um like my sister had wanted my partner to be the godfather for my nephew and they were like well he has to get baptized in the greek church if he wants to be the godfather right there's like it's just such an integral part of everyday life whether people are religious or not um, so you'll see churches everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very pretty ones too sometimes. <laughs> um, excellent. Well, thank you, Lena. And we're going to kind of transition into uh, a, a trip around Greece. Um, that um, excuse me, I have a question for Lena. Sure. Yeah, I wrote it in my chat. Um, you mentioned before about the, about the bars that are predominantly for men. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, um, like I, as an American woman, you know, there are, there are cultural freedoms that I have here in America. Would that, would those customs here in America translate to, 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 to Greece where would I, you know, would I be doing something that's normal, you know, that's every day for an American woman to do here, but in Greece, they would think, they would think I would, I'm offensive or something like that. And I'm not, I'm not aware of it because I don't know that, I don't know the customs mm -hmm. of that area. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I really don't think so. I think, um, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to, but I think for the most part, like Greek women are probably even more sort of, um, how should I say this? I don't know. <laughs> sort of like, I don't know. Well, I guess, okay, you know, I, guess, I guess what I'm referring to, I guess what I'm referring to is, I just want to make sure that, you know, that my, like, like, like I was surprised, like in other countries, in, in like in Asian countries, it's, it's considered offensive for a woman to look square in the eye 
of an of a man and you know there's there's drama <laughs> around that <laughs> yeah but, i know what you yeah, mean like, i don't like, think I, you know just, mm -hmm. yeah like i don't think it's quite the same and i wouldn't necessarily worry about that stuff i mean yes this is okay. like new is like a space for men and it's weird if a woman goes there but it's also not like you know, like you're offending people. They'll just be, they'll probably just talk about you. Like, what is she doing here? Um, <laughs> okay. In okay. terms of eye contact, I mean, there's no problem with making eye contact, but, but it is possible that if you're making prolonged co eye contact, that a man is going to take that as like a, an invitation to come over okay. to you because that's kind of like the unspoken way of flirting and stuff. But, um, okay. But yeah, not just like looking somebody in the eye while you're talking is not really the same. It's more like across the room, like you're staring at somebody and <laughs> giving a, a sign. <laughs> okay, Good. okay, thank you. You're I think the one thing I do can think of is that like, if you go into churches and stuff, you know, sometimes you have to be sure that like your shoulders are covered and things like that. Isn't that, is that mm -hmm. correct, Lena? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think even like in Greek weddings and Greek baptisms, women dress very like um, what we okay. would consider like not uh, modestly. So right. yeah, I yeah, not necessarily think it's important. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good Thank question. You. Thank you guys. <clears throat> um, so yeah, uh, we're going to take a little virtual trip around Greece. Uh, this is going to sort of mirror the itinerary that we offer. So um, the first part of it is all uh, on the sea and sailing around some islands. And then, uh, and then there's some add-on options that you can do as well. Um, so uh, let's see. The oops, next slide here. Um, <clears throat> overview of our itinerary, as you can see here, it's sort of a zoomed out uh, version. You can see Athens here, where we you'll fly into Athens, um, and we'll depart from the Alamos Marina that's uh, just outside of Athens. Um, and we go to Aegina Island, Ermione, Poros, Epidaurus, and then the add-ons are what can take you out to Santorini or up to Delphi. Um, so that's just a broad overview. Here's a little closer zoom in of our base itinerary, um, which is the six day, seven day sailing trip. Um, Joy, do you want to kind of give an overview since you'll be at the helm? Or <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, as uh, Laura said, this is the Alimos Air, uh, Marina, which is huge. And um, we'll be there the first night uh, getting, do you want me to talk about getting acclimated on the boat? Is that uh, um, or just, just you kind of a basic, you know, overview of the itinerary and then, yeah, we'll go into the, the boat details. <laughs> Later. Okay. So, yeah, we, we go uh, this way, which we go to Aina first, which is famous for their pistachios. Um, uh, then we go on to um, Eremoni, which is over here. Are, are you guys seeing my mouse move in here? No. Um, <clears throat> you're not. Okay. So, oh, Ermoni. Yeah. Ermoni is here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we go up to Poros, which is, um, uh, right here. Yep. 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 We're going to go with, it's gorgeous, uh, sailing there. Uh, you, so when we go through the, from er, Epidauros to, I mean, sorry, um, Ermoni to, uh, Poros, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's just, uh, you see Hydra, which is a little Island off of to the, to the bottom there, it says Idra there, it's, that's mm -hmm. Idra. That's a beautiful uh, island. So we'll be sailing in between those two land masses and then up to Poros, which Poros is gorgeous uh, city. We'll spend a day, I guess, in um, at the dockside so people can come and go off the boat as they want. And then on to um, Ermoni, uh, which, I'm sorry, Epavadaros, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah. they're both E, e words, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> which the uh, the big um, stadium is there, um, the which I think you're planning a tour uh, out there. So um, but it's a beautiful spot, and all of these places have very nice um, uh, dockside places to eat, and uh, they have, the food is unbelievable there. And then back to um, so yeah, if you want to kind of go over, you know, some of the the um, details about the boat. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the boat. Uh, it's a big one. Um, it's got lots of cabins. Uh, um, 
yeah it's you can kind of see the diagram here mm -hmm. yeah it's a catamaran it's got uh like four i see four doubles there's a a, a bunk bed uh, another stateroom with bunk beds and then two singles up in the bow which are for the crew um inside uh you've got tons of area to hang out in either inside you can see both on these two upper pictures the inside dining area and the outside dining area so there's literally two places to to wander around in and then um on the bow there's or, or your staterooms this is typical stateroom every stateroom has a, a head which is a bathroom and um yeah these are pretty standard uh staterooms there and they're doubles, double beds. Um, yeah, um, and just to, to, you know, for people that are, um, you know, paired with someone. So you can see here how there's actually like two mattresses um, and they can make the beds up uh, kind of separately. So you have your own sheets and, and bedding and things like that, um, if you prefer that. Um, and then, yeah, there is the two um, single bunks as well, <clears throat> just to kind of let yep. people know a little bit about that. Um, yeah, do you want to talk about the overall experience? <clears throat> yeah, so um, typically on my charters, I like people to help if they if they are interested in it. I always carry a first mate with me um, so that they are the second pair of hands that can help out uh, with trimming sails, steering, docking. But 90% um, of the people that come on the boat want to help out or they want to learn more. So that's always an opportunity for them to um, get involved in sailing. Um, and or you can just sit on the bow and read a book the entire time or just, you know, take photos. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, <clears throat> breakfast and lunches are typically made on the boat. Um, usually I'm the first one up, so I usually get the coffee going. And uh, <laughs> we will be, uh, be, you know, COVID will allow us to clean the boats. Um, every day the boats will be, be wiped down and it'll be something that we'll all get, you know, have to get used to. Um, which is actually a good practice anyhow. Yeah. So the picture of this uh, you see here is a woman on the bridge. So uh, and on these catamarans on the very top level is where this uh, woman is standing. It's um, So that's another a whole other area to sit and observe. And so you've got so much room on these boats to hang out. Even if there's 12 or 14 people, it's it's a huge boat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we'll be you know, half, like a, a good portion of the trip is just the experience on the boat, um, sailing around the coast. So yeah, yeah we want to make sure we're all comfortable. <clears throat> um, great. So we'll kind of go into the, the day by day now. Um, everyone, like I said, arrives, would arrive into Athens. Um, you could arrive, you know, the day of, day one of our itinerary, and we will pick you up at the airport and bring you um, to the marina and to the boat straight away. Um, obviously, you also have the option to arrive a little bit earlier. You could even arrive a few days earlier um, to give yourself maybe some more time to explore Athens. Obviously, there's tons of amazing things to see and do in Athens. Lena, do you have any of your favorite highlights? <laughs> um, you know, funny, I've been to Athens several times and only for a few hours at a time. So, oh. <laughs> like, not really. <laughs> Fair I mean, enough. A proper, a proper trip. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's the obvious, you know, um, the Parthenon and Acropolis, and uh, we'll go actually into that a little bit more later because it is part of one of our our add-on options. Um, <clears throat> so when we uh, when you start sort of day one of the itinerary, we'll get you to the Alamos Marina where the boat will be docked. Um, these are some pictures uh, of of that marina, and we'll. Um, be getting together for a dinner uh, that evening at a restaurant um, just on the shores there. Um, but that'll be after uh, Joy, you'll be giving everyone sort of an introduction to the boat. <laughs> yep, we do a briefing when everyone arrives uh, to go over. You just kind of get your, your feet uh, acclimated to being on a boat and we go over uh, the boat, um, put your things away. Then I do a briefing, say, uh, a safety briefing as well as an um, informational briefing about being on the boat and then I believe there's dinner that evening at the marina yeah for yeah, everybody yeah. Yep. yeah absolutely and it's you know if anybody's never been on a, a boat before you know there's no worries they'll you know joy will, will take you through <laughs> all the ins and outs <laughs> definitely <clears throat> 
Um, great. Yeah. And we'll be there. Hopefully we'll have a nice sunset um, that evening as we settle into our, our first, uh, first night. Um, when then we'll set off early the next morning to our first stop of Aegina Island. Um, so as we go, you can just, you know, post up with the book or do whatever you like to enjoy the scenery. Um, Joy, do yeah, you want to talk fairly, about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's a fairly short uh, trip to Aina from the Aina. marina. Yeah. Um, so it'll, it's a good way to get your, uh, get acclimated to being on the boat. And um, we'll get in in time for some exploration and then some dinner ashore. Yeah, yeah. And Aina is, you know, uh, really beautiful island it's you know sort of got these pine clad hills um, and you know beautiful views of the gulf it's known for its pistachios I believe which should be uh, in season nicely around the time that we're there <clears throat> anything else about Aina that you remember well, the, an the anchorage is really nice um, mm. it's very peaceful uh, there's a t little we're going to go into an area where there's like a small uh, town lots of waterfront restaurants and shops. <clears throat> so um, yeah, it's just charming. Absolutely, yeah. And as uh, George mentioned, there's a there's a temple, a Doric temple, I believe, um, and you know, that, that's a very, uh, very accessible, probably, you know, go up and, and explore uh, and walk to that because we will we'll have some time on Aina since it's a shorter sailing day. Um, oh, and there we go, there's another picture. Uh, so next we go to Ermione. And uh, that's, is that about a, that's a longer sail, correct? It is a longer sail, yep. Um, I would say five hours, maybe four or five hours. Um, one thing I will say that if it turned out, like let's say there was no wind, which is never really the case in Greece, but if there was no wind and it was turning out to be, if we didn't put the motor on, it would be a long sail, I will put the motor on just so we can get, I want people to get to the air, the, the towns that we go to, so you have some time to explore. Um, and this picture on the left here is, tip, is, that's what the bow is like. You sit on a netting, you hang out, you've got your little drink with you, and um, yeah. It's a, it's a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. And Ermione, um, you know, is just another like lovely, it's actually not an island, it's on the, the, the coast on the Peloponnese Peninsula. Yep. <clears throat> and, um, but it's surrounded, as you can see on that, in that photo, kind of on all three sides um, with the sea and it's got these great promenades and waterfront restaurants and cute little alleyways to kind of wander around and, um, <clears throat> trying to think of the other highlights in Ermione. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I've never been there. I just have sailed by it. Uh, this mm -hmm. will be my first time going, but I know yeah. it's a highlight for, for many um, uh, captains. Yeah. I've heard about that it's, it's a great place to stop. Yeah, definitely. Um, it should have a good amount of uh, kind of restaurants and, and places to grab drinks. Yeah, and, definitely. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And good swimming too, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few beaches. Uh, or, or right off the boat. <laughs> that's also true, yeah. And then from there we go to Poros. Poros. <clears throat> Is that about another five hours or so? Mm, four, maybe four hours. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, Porus is uh, another, you know, beautiful spot. There's um, obviously the the waterfront and promenade to explore. Um, there's a there's a hike to a fort that overlooks the city. <clears throat> um, we'll have dinner ashore every every evening. We'll have dinner ashore. Like you'll have the option to go. Um, you'll have you know free time to explore and, and pick your pick your own um, spot for for dinner each evening. <clears throat> Anything else about Porus to add? Well, uh, <laughs> that this picture is actually probably taken from a boat because there's a canal kind of that goes through. It, this is a very beautiful, picturesque way to come into Poros and where that little boat is that's, uh, that's along the quay, that's where we're, what we're gonna do. We're gonna be quayside to, um, you know, in front of all the shops and restaurants. And there's the place that I'm hoping that we end up in is, um, a very good restaurant and the they it's family style they bring everything out um uh, it's all fresh fresh seafood delish delicious stuff <laughs> and yeah then, we're going to talk all about the food coming up for sure that's a whole yeah. other, you know <laughs> topic unto itself yeah <laughs> definitely 
Um, and then from there we go to Apodaris, um, <clears throat> which is, I think, another four to five hours. From what um, probably four hours, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a beautiful spot again on the Pel 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 Peloponnese Peninsula. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the uh, excursion that we'll do there when we go ashore is to the um, this ancient amphitheater that's uh, right next, you know, a short drive um, from the from the coast there. And it's as you can see, this massive, incredible amphitheater. And um, you know, it's it's they actually still have performances there. It's still in use. Um, it's been in use for thousands of years. It's one of those, you know, sort of acoustically perfect. You can stand in the center there and and you know hear from the, the top row. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple questions that I want to talk about. Yes, we do spend the night on the boats, um, in your cabins on the boats. Um, so you'll be drifting asleep, uh, rocked by the, the motion of the ocean. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you're not into restaurants that much, Mandy, there's plenty of else, you know, other things to wander, get a coffee, um, just go explore and, um, you know, get lost and, and, you know, find all the little nooks and crannies and take pictures and go swimming and plenty of, plenty of things to, to explore in each of these uh, spots for sure. Um, yes, there is an ancient healing center at Epidaurus as well, which we'll be able to explore while we're there. Um, and then we go back to Athens. And that sail is how long? Uh, that's probably uh, three, three to four hours. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, not too long, but they all will aim to get back to, to the marina, um, sort of midday ish. Um, and, uh, you know, that'll be sort of the end of our, our venturing around, um, on the boat, but that, uh, day when we get back to the marina, we'll actually take a, a taxi, um, transportation into central Athens. Um, and there we will meet with our community partner, um, and so they'll tell us a little bit about um, all the work that they do in Greece. Uh, Lighthouse Relief is the name of the organization. They've been around, um, sort of, you know, started to um, come together during the, the height of the refugee crisis in, um, in Greece and uh, have continued to work uh, with the refugees and in the, um, the camps. They're active on, the, on Lesbos, the island where most people um, arrive and um, also at the Ritzona camp on the mainland of Greece. Um, and so you'll have a chance to learn a lot about the work they do and um, just, you know, that, that um, the impact of, of this on Greece and, and, you know, kind of to fold that all into your, to your experience of Greece um, should be very interesting and, and informative um, and then we will uh, go for dinner in Athens and then back to the boat for our final night of sleep before uh, the next morning you can obviously depart um, so we will transport you to the airport um, or if you want we have two different add-ons that we have sort of created um, that uh, you can choose from, or, you know, obviously you can stick around and do your own thing. Um, the first of the add-ons is an Athens and Delphi uh, sort of package. So you'll depart um, for Delphi instead of going to the airport um, and spend one night there and then back to Athens um, to explore uh, like a whole day in Athens, stay the night again uh, in Athens, in central Athens. And then the, the, the last day, you know, you would depart. So, um, Delphi, for those of you that aren't familiar, is uh, an incredible ancient site in Greece. Um, it's off in the mountains, a couple hours drive from Athens, not too far, um, but it's, uh, you know, of massive sort of significance in, in ancient history of Greece. It was the site of an oracle, and there's just, as you can see, incredible ruins, and it's in this incredible setting um, at the top of the mountains there. So that's um, a really big highlight, especially for any anyone who's really into ancient history of, of Greece. Um, so we'll sort of you know, spend the day there exploring with a guide. Um, and then um, that night we'll have dinner and stay near Delphi and then head back to Athens the next morning where we we'll have a whole day to go and see um, the, the you know, main historical sites of Athens, obviously the Parthenon, Acropolis, the Roman Agora, 
um, and uh, or just a list of a few other ones too. And this is all with a, a guide who will, um, you know, have all the, the historical background information and be able to answer all your questions. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that, and then that night in Athens, hope, you know, we'll find a, a great little taverna. There's lots of little streets that are just full of restaurants and, and lots of lively sort of character in Athens and usually a, a nice view of the uh, Acropolis lit up at night too. So um, that's that final night. And then the second add-on option is um, we've had a few people asking about Santorini. Obviously it's a, a popular spot in Greece um, for, for a reason. Um, so Santorini is uh, way out here. You can see these, this island um, out here. Our sailing itinerary, to give you an idea, is all this, and then Santorini is whoop, out there. Um, <clears throat> so this is the island of Santorini, um, and you'll arrive uh, into the island here. It's an early morning that, that day that you know we wake up on the boat and some people might go to the airport, you'd be getting on a very early ferry um, to, to head out to Santorini, which um, you know, I think is about a, a five hour journey. Um, so that way you'll have, you know, a good bulk of the day uh, in Santorini to, to explore um, the islands. You'll stay uh, in this part of the island here. Um, and on Santorini itself, obviously, you know, there's the iconic kind of whitewashed buildings, um, these gorgeous villages that are kind of terraced up the, the, the cliffs. Um, there's the famous, you know, kind of blue dome church. This is, um, you know, a lot of those um, you know, pictures that you see uh, that look like this are from Santorini or might be from Santorini. Um, and, uh, and then um, it's also full of incredible beaches. There's actually a red sand beach, black sand beach, white sand beach. You can pick your color beach uh, on Santorini. There's lots of uh, volcanic activity uh, that formed Santorini, so that's why it has a lot of really interesting uh, rock and sand and colors and landscape. Um, and there's some really amazing archaeological sites on Santorini, as well as uh, vineyards and um, yeah, just lots of options to explore while you're there. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, yeah, that kind of wraps up the the itinerary and destinations that we have selected in Greece. Um, and all along the way, we're going to be enjoying delicious food, which I'll uh, let Lena tell us a little more about. Um, yeah, so the food is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I talked about, kind of similar to how I talked about before, where everybody eats community style, we really have this thing um, that's common, especially if you go to a taverna, which is called like to get mezes, kind of like a bunch of different appetizer-like dishes. Um, and you know, the famous Greek uh, liquor, oozle. So you will sip your oozle while you eat your mezes. Um, and it really is meant to be uh, had with food while you're eating. It's not like a thing you take shots of, <laughs> like you don't really do that. So. Um, yeah, that's a really common normal thing to do to go out to the taverna and eat like that. Um, seafood, of course, is everywhere, is a huge part of the diet. Um, you will see here on the bottom right. Oh, yeah. yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a gyro. So um, some of you may know that as a gyro, <laughs> but it's a gyro. Um, and you know, especially I think in, in the States, I'm not sure about other places, but you'll find them um, with kind of like a mix of lamb and beef meat or there's tzatziki on it, but like a real, real Greek gyro, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> has meat, tomato, French fries, ketchup and mustard. So like that, <laughs> if you want to have a real one, you should get that. Um, <laughs> And you can go now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and then, you know, we have all of these very like homey kind of foods, like stuffed vegetables and things like moussaka, which you're probably familiar with. Um, these little things on the bottom right are, they're kind of like fritters made of zucchini. So yes, meat is a very big part of the Greek diet. And that's another thing. It's kind of weird if you're a vegetarian, um, but it is really possible to find 
veggie food in Greece. Um, first of all, there are tons of different kinds of salads. There are lots of these little sort of patty things made with either zucchini or tomatoes or potatoes. Um, there are lots of dishes that, you know, are made primarily of beans or okra or eggplant. Um, so there are a lot of options. You just have to, I guess, ask um, what you should order. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, uh, you know, baked stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have these places called Furna, which is ovens, bakeries. Um, so a great place to go in the morning to get some bread, or if you want to get spanakopita or tiropita, spinach pie or cheese pie. Um, and I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go to a bugazzidico. You get bugazza, <laughs> which is this thing on the bottom uh, left. It's actually something we eat for breakfast, but it's a phyllo pastry kind of thing filled with cream and you can get cinnamon and sugar on top and it feels really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> We've had a couple yeah. questions come in about uh, various dietary restrictions like vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free. What's the sort of story for that? <clears throat> yeah, so um, I feel like pretty much anything that's vegetarian is also going to be vegan because not much of that stuff is going to have cheese, right? Of course, you're not going to order like mm. tropita and think that's vegan. But um, yeah, most things just have like an olive oil base or a lemon base or a tomato base. Um, so I would think they would be vegan and then gluten-free. I mean, we definitely eat a lot of like bread and uh, phyllo type stuff, but you can easily avoid it as well. I yeah. Think. I mean, you know, from my experience, the, 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 the produce, you know, the fruits and veg yeah. are just amazing in Greece. Yeah. Um, so even if you're just going to like the little markets and, yeah. you know, kind of picking up uh, snacks and nuts and, you know, these kinds of things on the boat, um, you know, I, I mean, I can let Joy uh, kind of talk about that. But yeah, we, we tend to get a lot of um, sort of food to pick at. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely be that. And there's uh, rice dishes too that... Um, you know, stuffed rice, uh, uh, what do they call the leaves, the grape leaves? Oh, yeah. Dol dolma, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's uh, there's plenty of options for uh, people that are gluten-free. I, I personally am, I try to not eat a lot of bread and I'm, there's never an, uh, not, there's never a lack of, of uh, other choices. Of yeah, food. yeah, it seems there's quite a, a good variety for sure. Um, <clears throat> So moving on to some travel tips for Greece, generally speaking. Um, do you want to start it off, Lena? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so if you, I guess especially if you're going in the summer, you should know that it will be hot in the day. Um, but then it gets actually pretty cool and chilly at night. You should definitely have like a small jacket and it is very windy, as Joy said, it can be very windy. Um, so just prepare to be cold. It's not something that you really think about, but you will definitely need something. And then if it's more, I think this trip is on October, right? Yeah, the first week of October. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it can be pretty, pretty chilly, especially at night. Yeah, the islands tend to still be quite... Um... Warm. warm and you know the you know for for even like swimming and, and the beaches it's like the first week of October I think um, yeah and south like that <clears throat> it, it, in my experience we were there the end of September so it was around the same time and it was hot so we had the air we in Athens that trip I did uh we had the air on at night so um we, yeah. we would turn it on for on a boat you turn it on and cool everything down and then you shut it shut it off and it stays pretty cool for you know a good part of the night and every every room has fans in them but I don't think it's going to be that chilly I think it, it'll be pretty warm it'll be swimming you know too. yeah <laughs> that's the goal definitely yeah and and you know it's it, May is kind of when the sea starts to become warm enough um for swimming just depending I guess on how how warm you like it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it usually stays warm through September and maybe into. But like, 
uh, Lana, or I'm not sure if you said it, um, Laura, t putting the layers, having layers is very important. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something to put on um, in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, anything else like packing wise? Um, so one thing I think like a, a headlamp is, is usually a good plan. The, the streets can get kind of darker, you know, than we're used to at night. Um, obviously, all your basics, anything on the, street, on the boat, specific? The, uh, you know, sunglasses, hats, uh, sunscreen. Mm -hmm. um, the boat comes with towels and all the linens, but uh, you might want to bring a, your own towel just if it's bigger, if you want to go to the beach or something. I don't know that we'll have a lot of time to go to the beach, but uh, it's up to you if you want to bring another towel with you. Um, shoes like boat, uh, good comfortable shoes that are rubber soled for the boat um, are are good to have. Our sneakers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <clears throat> the the Meltemis. There's a question. Do the Meltemis come in October? The Meltemis. Uh, uh, yes. Um, it's a, the certain winds that are there. Uh, are those the ones that are kind of infamous for August? <clears throat> well, the they come in the later in the night, like they, mm, they, mm -hmm. the wind picks up in the night. Like here, the wind, well, I don't know, everyone's coming from all over the place, but in Connecticut, they, they die down around sunset, whereas in Greece, they kind of increase. So, um, uh, but it, in either case, we, we manage with, the winds are good for sailing, so. <laughs> That's what matters, yeah. Um, I haven't been to Greece in uh, Easter week, um, but I imagine it gets quite a bit of uh, festivities. Have you been there during that time, Lena? During like the, the uh, day of like a Semana Santa? Like, no, uh, I yeah. haven't. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, excellent. Money and tipping, did you want to add in a few things about that? And guides? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I think card is being accepted more and more and I imagine especially in the south where there's a lot of tourism um, but I would still make sure to always have cash on hand um, and with tipping it's not necessarily required but it's more or less expected um, so with food going out to eat I would say five to ten percent if you're just getting like a coffee or a drink at a bar or a cafe I just round up to the to the next euro um it's not necessary to tip taxi drivers again maybe you can just round up to even it out um and then tour guides yes i think you should uh tip your tour guides and i'm i imagine you give your guests kind of guidelines about yeah absolutely um anyone that signs up for the trip we give um a packet that has you know a packing list and and you know tips and guidelines for all sorts of things um, and uh, yeah I mean <clears throat> money tipping guides all that kind of stuff for sure <clears throat> yeah um, excellent and then uh, for our Greek language lesson <laughs> I'll turn it over to you again <laughs> yeah I mean I don't even know if I should go through all of this I guess uh, <laughs> maybe people can take a little recording but I mean <laughs> yeah for sure but yeah, I can, uh, maybe just to give you a sense of how some of it sounds, right? Um, hello, like, yasa, stikanis, how are you? Um, my name is Melene, uh, Melene Lena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, it's nice to meet you, Harika, which is really kind of like, I'm overjoyed. That's kind of how we say, nice to meet you. Um, both please and you're welcome are parakalo. Thank you is efkaristo. Uh, so yeah, I have a sense of. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Yeah, and we, we'll, we'll definitely try and encourage people to, to use uh, some Greek language when we're there. It's always such a great, um, you know, I think it's so appreciated uh, when yeah. travelers and tourists make an effort to, to you know, learn some of the language. Um, so yeah, hopefully, Hopefully you'll, you'll all give it a shot. <laughs> um, and then real quickly too, we just wanted to touch on a few other highlights in Greece um, for any trip that, you know, maybe doesn't, if you're not going to join our itinerary, if you want to do sort of something completely different uh, in Greece. Um, I, I 
Corfu is an incredible island um, that, that just has, you know, it's quite big and you could spend days um, just exploring Corfu. Same with Crete. Um, Joy, I know you would mention the Ionian Islands as, a, as another beautiful spot. <clears throat> yes, gorgeous. Uh, a bus, a four and a half hour bus ride from Athens. Um, you take the KTL bus from downtown, takes you right into uh, Lefkas and uh, when I end up doing another trip there uh, in the future, that's what I will, uh, maybe we'll do one together and we'll, yeah. <laughs> Next we'll, have, we'll uh, take the bus there or you can fly into Corfu. It's actually very easy to fly into Corfu and then just take a 20 minute taxi ride. And yeah. then we get on the, the, we would get on the boat there and these islands are amazing, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, Lena, I know your kind of expertise is the, the mainland. Did you want to talk about some of the highlights there? Um, yeah, there's so many great spots. <laughs> there is um, an area called Zagori, which is really good for hiking and seeing waterfalls um, and rivers. There's Meteora, if you probably have seen the images of like these really tall rocks and like the monasteries on top. Um, you can go hiking on Mount Olympus. Uh, get close to the gods, you know. Um, <laughs> there's also this place called Khalgidiki, which has these little sort of three fingers peninsulas coming out and they're really amazing beaches there. Um, so yeah, those are some of the highlights. Oh yeah, maybe you can type the name of that, that fingers one in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so an interesting question from uh, someone about Greece being extremely crowded um, <clears throat> and uh, the best time to go to Greece to avoid the crowds. Um, I think, you know, in general, obviously the high season um, would be, you know, June, July and August um, when you're going to have the biggest crowds. However, you know, for anyone who's considering going to Greece, um, you know, as soon as possible, whether that's maybe later this year or next year, I think, you know, we're kind of in a unique situation in the sense that a lot of the places that, you know, might have been more crowded um, will not be as much. Um, <clears throat> Is there anything you know you've experienced with the crowds there in you know certain times to avoid or places that are super crowded? Um, I would say generally, yeah, like the mainland <laughs> and the north is less crowded, mm -hmm. less touristy. I mean, mm -hmm. we definitely get tourists, um, especially from like neighboring countries, Bulgaria. Um, or like places like Germany, people will come to the north a lot, but it's not, it's not the same as the islands in the south. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, I think a lot more the off the beaten path kind of, you know, if, yeah. if that's the goal um, would be up in there. I mean, and in general, you know, we usually plan all of our itineraries like in that sweet spot that's kind of the shoulder season where, you know, you still have some of the, the hanging on good weather of the high season, but it tends to be, uh, you know, a lot less crowded and, um, you know, the, the things aren't as expensive, flights aren't as expensive, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, with this itinerary, we'd actually originally planned this itinerary for May of, uh, or was it early June or late May, Joy? Late May. May yeah. Um, of a couple months ago and obviously had to uh, postpone. Um, so, you know, then we kind of picked the the sweet spot in the, in the fall. Um, and, uh, you know, if, uh, if worse comes to worse and October 4th through 10th is not viable as well, then um, it will be again postponed to spring 2021, like May of 2021. Um, and of course, you know, everybody will just be, all the payments and everything will just move to those dates or, <clears throat> um, yeah. So uh, we've kind of been answering questions as we go, but uh, if there's any other questions that people have, feel free to to pipe in now. Uh, we're going a little bit over time, so we'll try and wrap things up quickly. Um, <clears throat> the plan of the catamaran. Ooh. Um, well, I'll, I'll definitely be sending a recording of the the event to everyone who you know has registered, so you can always go back and look at anything that you want to review um, that way. And uh, I'll be sending out some other links and information as well in the follow-up email that'll that'll give you even more in-depth uh, information on Greece. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so um, <clears throat> the. 
uh, last thing I guess I just wanted to mention is that we do have a discount for our uh, trip um, October 4th through the 10th of uh, 2020, uh, $200 off valid uh, till August 15th. Um, there's the website there uh, that has all the details, um, sort of a breakdown of the itinerary, what's included, um, all of that on the, the trip page there. Um, so if you want it, we've got, I think, two spots left. Um, so not a, lot of, not a lot of space if you want to nab up those last two spots. Um, and we do, uh, at Traverse Journeys, just have a couple other discounts currently going on for our Iceland tour and our Croatia tour in October as well. Um, so you can check all those out on the website. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Meetup, um, and uh, by reaching out to hello at traversejourneys.com if you have any questions. And our next online virtual event is on August 11th. We have sort of a more interactive, casual, social chat um, all about sort of self-guided travel and, um, you know, more independent um, independently exploring uh, new destinations. So uh, if you wanna join us for that, uh, just check it out on Eventbrite and register there. Um, and yeah, thank you very much to Joy and thank you to Lana for coming along and giving us all your uh, expertise and information from your experiences in Greece. And thank you to all of you that have joined uh, and asked great questions and, and um, yeah, we'll send out the recording and I hope to see you again at another event in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. <laughs>